Hey, how's it going guys? Jackson here with Toasty DIY, and today we are taking a look at this 1977 Colt Trooper MK3. It comes in the blued finish with wood grips, um, and you know, it's a Colt. It's just really a famous classic gun. Um, you know, it's basically one step before uh, the Colt Python, you know, which is uh, really over the years became a, a really iconic gun because of, you know, things like The Walking Dead and Call of Duty. You know, this is just like the uh, pistol in every game that everybody wants. So it's really cool to be able to have one of these. I actually managed to get this on a trade and I actually had another Colt with it that was really cool. I have some pictures um, of the other one I got on the screen. I ended up selling that one, but that was a 1971 Colt Police Positive that had supposedly never been fired besides the test fire um, from the factory. So that was a really pretty gun. Um, but I really appreciate the age on this one and the fact that it has been used and abused um, it just, you know, to me means that I don't have to baby it and, you know, it can actually be used, you know, just to um, have fun, you know, at the range and everything. This is a 357 Magnum with a six inch barrel, um, really big gun. And the reason I have this here is to give you guys a comparison idea. This right here is a uh, 60s Smith & Wesson model 36. And this is also a, well, this is a 38 Special and this is a 357 Magnum, but obviously this can shoot 38 Special. This one can only shoot 38 Special. And uh, you have a, I believe, two inch snub nose barrel, um, a much smaller grip and overall just a smaller gun. This gun here um, weighs around 18 ounces, 18 or 19. And this one here, I really don't even know the weight, but I would guess it's probably about two pounds. Um, I, you know, I, I'll put it on the screen, but I would guess like in the realm of 30 ounces or more. I mean, it's, it is a very heavy gun and it feels really good, but the main, you know, drawbacks and advantages between these two is with this one, great carry gun. You know, you can just throw it in a holster like this. I mean, there you go. You have a really, um, you know, easy carry gun if you're, uh, you know, doing concealed carry with well, this guy here, I actually got a free holster with it. As you can tell, it actually, the barrel sticks out of the holster. So obviously, um, this one just really stays in in the case um, because it's just such a big gun. I mean, not to say that it couldn't be carried. Um, just on, on most people, this would just look absolutely insane um, to, to carry. Now, one thing I will say, though, is with a gun this big, you do have very minimal recoil. It's very easy to handle. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible for your hand to, like, slip off this or anything. And on top of that, there's, like I said, almost no recoil. So when you shoot this thing, it is almost dead accurate. I mean, it is absolutely, uh, you know, true to where you aim, especially once you line up your uh, sight there. And it's just obviously a basic fixed iron sight. But it is just such an accurate gun. It's, um, it is really fun to shoot. This one here, I mean, you know, it's a really cool gun. It's fun to shoot, but it is not nearly as fun as the Colt. Uh, because this one, you know, it's 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 accurate, uh, you know, for it being a snub nose and everything. But unless you're, you know, really seasoned veteran with one of these, you're not going to hit the bullseye every single time. But this one here, um, I can almost guarantee even a beginner shooter could definitely hit their shots as long as they, uh, you know, know how to aim it. So this one here is a six shot Colt. This one is a five shot Smith & Wesson. And to unload, I do like the unloading action a lot more in this one. You have uh, this guy right here that actually slides back, but the Smith & Wesson, you actually have to slide it forwards to get it out, and uh, it's not a very smooth action, and that's not necessarily this gun swallowed. It's just, you know, it's old. It might not be lubed properly, but this one here is just absolutely smooth, and you can see it just pretty much fell out. Um, I do keep one out uh, where the hammer is, you know, just for safety reasons. Um, getting the bullets out is also very simple. You can see this one almost pushes them all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and just let them all out, so we're empty. But uh, yeah, it's it's really a, a smooth gun. I mean, it, the cylinder, I mean, I haven't even lubed it, cleaned it or anything since I got it. Um, and it's it's re really just, everything just goes together really well on it. Um, of course, it is single double action, so you can pull back the hammer. And of course, you can also just go single where you basically just pull back the trigger for the hammer um, to actually fire. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just a really quality gun. I mean, Colt's, you know, just an amazing brand. You know, it's one of those things where they sold out to CZ. Does that mean the value of Colt's will go up? I don't really know. You know, I'm not a huge... I, I like guns, but I'm not that into them where I really follow the market. Um, I know I've heard some people say they think the value is going to go up a lot on these antique Colts, um, you know, since they sold out. But uh, who knows? You know, I'm really not sure. Maybe let me know in the comment section down below what you think. But uh, yeah, the grip on this is absolutely beautiful. I, I assume that it's original, but I, like I said, am by no means an expert, so I really couldn't tell you if it is. It does have the Colt trademark and everything on it, so I at least assume it is a Colt grip. 
Um, and I don't know, it's just, it's really clean compared to the gun. I mean, the grip almost looks new. There's almost no wear on the texture, which is weird to me because even the Smith & Wesson that's really nice, you can see how it's kind of flattened on a lot um, of the spots there. But with this one here, I mean, besides this uh, big chip right there, it's really not like flattened out at all, which is kind of weird to me, um, you know, which makes me think that it's a replacement grip, but who knows. And I have a pretty nice video here to kind of compare the difference of shooting a 38 Special versus a 357 Magnum shot. Um, and it was funny because these 357 Magnum I got were from the guy who traded me the gun. I have no clue how old they are. They look like they're definitely older rounds. They might have been repacked rounds that were, you know, hand repacked. Um, I have no clue. And so it's funny because I had shot a couple of the 357 before, noticed almost, this is 38 Special. It felt just like a 38 Special. I mean, it maybe had a little bit more muzzle flash to it, but it felt like the exact same experience shooting the 38 Special versus 357. But then in the video, you'll notice I first shoot a 38 Special and then I shoot a 357. And I don't know if that second 357 I shot uh, just had more um, you know, grains of gunpowder in or, or something, but it was insane the difference. Um, of this shot like it actually scared me a little bit I was really surprised because it went from 38 special 357 no difference to suddenly 38 special 357 boom I mean huge difference but it just goes to show this is such a big and high quality gun that um, you know even with a little bit of extra powder possibly uh, you know this thing shouldn't expand or blow up or anything insane on you Ooh, that felt good Oh my gosh, you could definitely... And another thing I want to show you is just how thick that the barrel is on this. I mean, it's it's insane just the size of the hole versus the actual outer barrel. And then check out this Smith & Wesson. Um, it's it's a heck of a lot thinner. But you can see the, the rifling and everything on the barrel on the inside. Well, you probably can't see it, but it, it's still fairly there. It still actually looks really good on the inside. The bluing definitely has a lot of... Um, you know, wear to it. I was uh, told by my local gun store, uh, you know, just to take like a microfiber and an old copper penny um, and basically clean it with that. I don't really know how well that works, but um, these guys are antique gun experts and that's what they told me to try out. So I might have tried it sometime. It's really bad on the top, especially too. There's a lot of, um, like I would almost call it like tarnish and uh, rust and pitting and whatnot. Um, I don't know if it's in the surface or if it's under, but you know, that'll be one way to tell if I try to clean it. Pretty much it for this video. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert and there's not a ton for me personally to talk about there's a lot of awesome videos on youtube if you want to actually like an in-depth uh you know tutorial or guide on these but this is just kind of my take on it and just you know me showing that i was able to get one and um you know really happy with it so uh make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one